What's up guys? Today we're doing a little bit different video and we're talking with Rats, a former streamer of Raid and content creator, a clan mate of mine and the player with most rank 1 finishes in Raid. What's up Rats? Hello, hello, hello. Hope you're watching it. Uh, hello, my name is Rats. Uh, I did YouTube, I did streaming when I was playing Raid for like three years, I think. I think I played the game for like three, three and a half, uh, possibly years. Um, but yeah, it was a fun time, but now I'm basically playing something else called Warframe and kind of not planning to come back to Raid. You're not even planning to come back to streaming? Uh, hmm. I, I was, I was, uh, I guess I'm always thinking about it. Um, but haven't decided to click that button. Yeah, I mean, streaming. you were definitely my favorite streamer and pretty much the only raid streamer that I watched at one point. Nowadays, I guess I'm watching Final Kenbachi. That's the like only two streamers that I really. Uh, ever really watched a lot, so I mean, if you if you stream some other games, I might do it as well. But so, how many times have you actually finished rank one in red? I've finished seventeen times, and the never on my account. <laughs> and the person who has finished finished most uh, second most times is Panda with sixteen, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and you basically. Like you, I know because from talking with you, but you had been like um, not super into the game for a long time, and basically maybe for six months your plan was to get most trophies and quit the game. That's a question. Wait, say that again. Like you, for a long time you were planning to quit raid, and you just wanted to get most trophies in the game and then quit. What was that yeah. the plan? Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, that that was quite a while. That was when I only had a couple trophies. Uh, and then I set myself a goal. And I already knew the timeline since I knew how often I was winning, since I was winning around a trophy every month uh, on average. Deja vu. I just been in this place before. Higher on the street, and I know it's my time to go. Um, so it kind of it kind of made sense that it would take me a specific time and I even mentioned on uh, videos uh, oh I should be able to get you know 16 trophies by the end of the year of 2023 which did end up happening and then 17th at the beginning of 2024 and then I just um, basically quit yeah and I remember that everybody in the clan or not everybody but people were generally taking it as a joke but you you kept saying it for a long time that I only need like three more trophies I quit or five more trophies or whatever. So it was kind of apparent that you were basically done with the game, but you still had that goal that you wanted to finish. But uh, yeah. so tell me about that. I mean, I guess um, I don't know how much we want to get into that, but we have some weird um, like personal random relations. Like back when I met you, you were still playing with your own account and you had pretty like low spender, not super strong account, and you were pushing in Platinum. Can you like tell about the early oh, days? God. It was a horrible experience. I oh remember you God. were using Mortal Macab and Valkyrie defense team, and I was telling you to, you to use Fogot, and for the time I thought I was like super smart and big brained, but it actually, I guess it, it helped you. I guess you were using Fogot for a while until you got better champions. Yeah, it was, I mean, pretty much putting random, strong, legendary champions at a time. And Volgov was surprisingly not known by most players on how he actually works. And it caught a lot of people off guard since uh, a lot of people were using Tronda back then. Tronda was, was the meta. And uh, most of us didn't have Tronda. <laughs> Um, so oh, yeah, you, you have to find a way. You had the, uh, I can't even remember his name, the High Elves Boy champion. I Ifos. Yeah, you had Ethos, and Ito is, I mean, I guess you can use him if you don't have anything better, but it was kind of uh, like a meme champion, basically. I mean, in that meta, to be fair, you could basically use any nuker. I mean, Jannika was good, Tranda was good, any nuker that had decent damage was vi viable. 
that wasn't really the main thing. It was more about the supports and your defense team and so on. But so we, I have this funny story. I think I've told it before in live arena videos, but uh, I don't know if you still remember, but I have spoken about it a couple of times, so maybe you do. But we were both looking for new clans. This was just maybe like uh, maybe a couple of weeks after CVC release. And I was, again, I, I guess this is kind of repeating itself, but I was kicked from my original clan because I wasn't doing... Well, actually, I was kicked before the CVC release, but when it was announced, because they knew I was not going to do a lot of CVC points. And we were both looking for a clan. And I remember randomly, because I didn't know you back then, I didn't watch Twitch, and I didn't like, I didn't know that you were like a streamer or anything like that. But we were, we both applied to the Ancient Order pretty much at the same second, and we both de got declined because we had too little player power. Do you remember that? Yeah, exactly. They they required like, was it five mil? Yeah, and we were both uh, like three or file? three or four million. Yeah, yeah, it was like that. Yeah, it was tough times. And and we were both basically like competing in Platinum and like we basically met other requirements. It was just the player power that used to be a thing that people for some reason cared a lot about back then. I don't think anybody cares about player power anymore. Uh yeah, I don't uh I guess people I mean clans still have that same requirement of having like five mil player power. Um, just to appear higher on the ranking leaderboards or yeah. well, well, whatever the in-game leaderboard is for player power. But yeah, most top-end clans, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, Not so, a big deal. So that's how we originally met, or we didn't really talk about at all back then, but li later on, like I noticed that part. But then we both joined the scene at the same time. That's basically how we met. And... I remember in the scene, we were both basically the two guys. I think there was one more guy in the clan that was pushing for Platinum, but he wasn't really talking a lot about it. But we were basically the only two guys pushing for Platinum, and we were tryharding with our like crappy Valkyrie defenses and Wokot defenses and so on. And we were making some random like videos like just for us two, and we were talking about your our defense locks and so on. Do you remember that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And... Then later on, like, I guess we're going to skip some steps, but then later on, we both ended up in MAD. I remember that uh, we were both in a clan that we didn't really get along with everybody. I kind of forget the details of the drama at this point, why, did, why we didn't get along with some people. But uh, you basically joined MAD. We had this secret plan that we were going to apply to, like, basically any of the big clans, like GNL, MAD and ET, I think maybe at the time. But then you basically ended up joining MAD, and then I didn't apply to anything yet, but then I applied to MAD because of that. But uh, we were in MAD for a while, and then you ended up driving. What happened with that? Uh, well, I realized... Uh, I just realized that no matter how well I do, there's still that ceiling that you basically can't break off unless you have a very very big amount of luck yeah like no matter how many times you try you still need that luck and i was still placing top 50 um i think pretty much every reset or at least most resets i was between top 20 and top 50 around that area and i realized that this is kind of you know depressing waste of time and that I could be playing on a Giga Chad 100k spent account and basically, you know, easily get top five, top three trophies, whatever, whatever. And it just seemed like best case scenario because that way I don't need to do uh, like spend money on my own account. I don't, I don't need to invest time into my own account. So that's why I decided to just give it away. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I remember when you did that and I was trying to like make you not do it by the way it's kind of funny thinking about it afterwards that uh we were able to place very high back in those days with very uh crappy accounts like that's not even remotely possible nowadays like those times were way more free to play friendly than right now and we didn't even realize it back then 
I mean, yeah. there were so many like epic champions before. Yeah, you, you, uh, you could used. use. You could use tons of epics and like we were both using Vogot and placing like top 50 consistently even before mad but after mad as well of course and yeah you, you couldn't even think about something like back in like not nowadays you couldn't think about something like that no more madame sarissa oh yeah madame Saris was made i think there was a bunch of other champions let me think yeah about it. it wasn't just Sila. yeah Sylar, Vogot. there was um of course seeker C seeker was maybe even more used than Vogot at one point. Then there yeah. was um, what's the epic champion in uh, Barbarians? The the one that gives the ally protection. Ah, uh, oh. I can't see it. Where is it? You have raid open, no? What? Do you have raid open? Yeah, oh yeah, you can see my screen. Oh fuck. Yeah, I have I have raid open. I'm looking. What what was the name of the champion? I, I just can't see the icon, but it's one of these. I have no idea. I could not. Tell I'm sure I... it's. Dude, I'm just. This always happened to me when I try to look for a champion. It's like on the middle of the screen and I don't notice it. But there is a barbarian champion that extends the boss and also does the ally protection when a teammate is below 50% or something like that. Sandless Survivor. Oh, but why can't I see it? Well, also another one, Sky that's sh Shaman. Do you remember yeah, that one? That was pretty common for Hedger teams. Yeah, yeah, you use it to cleanse against, uh, yeah, whatever CC, like Hegemon, I guess Stormin was still popular at that time. Was there any other CC champions apart from Lockout? Kaimar? I, I guess Kaimar was a bit popular it's in It's a Lego, no? <laughs> I, I thought we meant only epics. No, no, I, I meant like. Champions that you use Sky that's Shaman against. Oh. Like basically Kaimar, Tormin, Hegemon. Yep. Yeah. You would often see like Kaimar in team with Tormin. Like those were often paired together. Uh, was there any other champions now that you think about it? I guess Magnar. I mean, Magnar wasn't released at this time, I don't think yet, but when Magnar it was, was released. A lot later. Yeah, when Magnar was released, everybody was using it. Including like tons of people in Mad. Like I think Dips was using Magnar and a bunch of other people. That but it was basically the second best snooker if you didn't have Tranda, right? Yeah, it was actually so insane. The damage was crazy, especially for HP Nuka. It was it was cracked. Yeah, and you like I never actually used Magnar because I had Tranda. That's kind of funny because. Now, nowadays, I always complain about champions, but at that time, I basically had the best snooker in the game. But um, nowadays, people don't even remember that Magnar was meta at one time. Well, it's because Candy was really dominant in defense. Oh, yeah. Of, uh, Tronda. Yeah. Yeah, and there just wasn't too many, like, um, tanky snookers to use in defense anyway. So I think actually around that time, or... In, during that time, it was during the meta where people didn't actually run any nukers in defense, if you remember. Yeah. So that, yeah. That was, so someone just got full stall. It was crazy. Yeah, the, yeah. basically all of the good teams was like Warlord and then either uh, Tormin or Hegemon. That was basically every team. And usually it was like double reviver with those and there was some other variations with Kaimar, but the top teams didn't run basically any nukers at all. I remember that was when um, Creamy was it Creamy? Do you remember Creamy? Yep. Yeah. NZ NZ yeah. Creamy. Yeah, NZ Creamy who also joined Mad. He was running the team with um, double Candy and was it Resistance Cardial during the lockout style meta? Do you remember that? Yeah, it was crazy damage. And, and he was finishing like top twenty with like double Candy Cardial offers, like like a weird unique team that you don't really have the options to do something like that in the modern meta. Do you disagree? I have no idea what's the modern meta. Okay, last time you played, which is, come on, it's only a couple of months ago, it's not that I long I mean, ago. you can, can you still do like double Taras or that doesn't work? Or, yeah, no, no, you can do double Taras, but I mean like um, that there was like weird uh, random unique teams that there was only maybe like one player using that weren't considered meta but were viable and people were able to finish like high with that kind of stuff. Like, uh, you remember my... Consider 
Kutraxa? Meta? Or no. do you see people using Kutraxa on offense? I mean, not. I mean, I do see people using it against my defense a little bit, but I mean, yeah, crew tracks are easy to meta, sure. She's uh, pretty damn strong. I mean, um, I, I'm using Rotos no. UDK defense, so it works against me. So I actually do see it pretty often, to be honest. <laughs> I did like it quite a bit. I'm not gonna lie. The amount of damage she can put in if you have a six star Phantom Touch is is crazy. Sure. So maybe we're gonna skip forward a little bit so, but so you ended up driving but first of all what's the reason that you got super into like competing in raid like you know that you don't have the means to like put up the money and that's not really i guess something you're interested of even though you i'm sure you put some amount of money on your own account to get it to that state because you were a relatively new account but by the way that reminds me of the fun that funny thing you remember when um I, I probably remember these old stories better than you do, even though they are in relation to you more. But do you remember that time when there was those uh, bot accounts in like Classic Arena? And it was basically like a debate that is Plarium doing it on purpose or not? And over time, the bot accounts always disappeared. And then they made a comeback into the game. And people were always farming the bot accounts just like below uh, Platinum. But then we found out that the bot accounts are not just... Um, they are not just like random accounts that Plarium decided or created, but they are basically new accounts, and you were always appearing in the bot pages. Do you remember that? Yes, but I I still always thought there was Plarium, um, Plarium just putting in uh, bot accounts so we can just climb, climb Platinum. I think basically the new accounts were automatically like made as bot accounts, but mm. during that time, like around three years ago. If you just did a couple refreshes, it was super easy to specifically find you because you were in those bot pages and you had that one reset where you got hit like 120 plus times. Do you remember that? It was actually crazy. Do, do you recall the exact number? I think it was 120. I have no idea. Uh, it was so long ago. But you streamed was... that reset, right? I think there was some pictures about it too, but... Yeah, because uh, I always know it down how many uh, how many fights basically happened uh, in defense and offense, just so I can track on you know what should I improve and uh, how should I improve you know depending on uh, what type of people hit me. So it was one twenty five fights, mm -hmm. fifty eight of them were losses, and this was in the last 20 minutes of reset. Yeah, yeah, so it the wasn't... The defense event. I used was Duchess, Rector, uh, Rector Draft, Rotus, and Volgov. Yeah. And the placement I got is 79. Oh, I did win. I mean, the win rate on defense was a little over 50%, like 52 or something. Uh but yeah, it was it was hectic. I just kept I just kept scrolling and just seeing uh, fights and fights and fights. It was so crazy. Yeah, I remember back in those days. I also used to have very consistent, like fifty percent win rate. Nowadays, people don't really win that much in defense. I think those rates have gone like down a lot. Or what do you think about that? What what about on top accounts? Uh, how much on, do you get wins? I guess it really depends where you are and how you. Yeah. Because we push a lot longer now. Like yeah, like most way people longer. push for like an hour, yeah. and it really depends. If you stay at the very top, then yes, you're still gonna get hit. Um, it's still gonna be like I don't know, twenty times, twenty thirty times. Like there's some people that would just cap on you. Uh, yeah. But if you stay low, then I don't know you should be only getting. Uh, below 10 fights on defense. Yeah, I have actually one of my... Was, I think that was a video when I started making content or maybe that was one of those uh, unlisted videos that like when you were tracking your defense logs and we were both taking videos and not even publishing them but just uh, keeping them for ourselves so we can check our uh, stats. But I think it's either one of those or actual video that I made but there's one video on my channel that 
I do like a seven minute push. It was less than seven minutes, but basically a seven minute push. And I started out not being in platinum. I pushed only seven minutes and I got ranked 21. That's something that is totally impossible nowadays. Like that, that's a video. So I'll, I'll go to town on that. I'm not even execrating. I'll, I'll find it. I'll, I'll link that video. Have I talked about that before? Do you remember, do you remember that? I don't. I don't. I, 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 that I was. No I think that was like two years ago when I was using cardial defense. Like you remember, I used to, I used to run cardial defense for a long time because I didn't have a dots. Yeah, it was painful to see. To see me using cardial defense or not having yeah. dots. No, I mean both, both. Yeah. Just both. Yeah, that just was so dominant then. Yeah, but yeah, it, it's kind of going back and like. Um, maybe seeing things with rose tinted glasses, but it does feel like the PvP was much more approachable back then. Or what do you think about that? Uh, yeah, yeah, um, I guess, I guess, yes. Uh, now there's so many, hmm. Do you feel like there's more variety now though? Or do you think it's less? I mean, sure, the champions are all pretty much legendary instead of being some epics. Uh, like you, you mean like in terms of classic arena offense, a defense team or what? Yep. Yep. Classic arena and I guess both offense, uh, defense. Yeah. I mean, I don't think, uh, yeah, there's not that much var variety. There's maybe a little bit more than that right now than maybe a while ago, because people are starting to use a lot of primal champions in defense and not only the Taras. Maritska, UDK, Sifi, or some variation of that like before, you're still mostly seeing that, but then there's just some teams that are, are using primals with lockout or some type of speed threat, I guess, but I think it's still relatively stale. It's not... I, maybe it's kind of like it used to be, but the difference is that back in the days you could use epics, and now it's just... Uh, you can use primals, I guess. You, yeah, exactly. You, 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 can get upgrade. you can get through the Taras and Maritska meta if you do have many good primals. That way it's possible. Yeah. But so, I'm kind of curious, how did you like uh, get that into raid PvP? I mean, it's a random gacha game. I know, I don't know if you're playing League of Legends again, I guess not, but you used to be very competitive in that. But how did you end up like making some unlisted videos to track your defense logs in gacha game. How did you get so into it? So, I mean, I first started raid while playing league from a sponsor. So while I was playing league, I got approached by raid. I did the sponsor for them. And I thought, you know, this game's pretty chill. It's not as competitive. Uh, it feels, you know, super relaxing to play this. You don't have to play with anyone, no teammates type of thing. You just do things solo. That part I enjoyed quite a bit. Um, then, after a while, after a couple of months, uh, Arena seemed super fun. Um, so I decided to get good, basically. And, uh, yeah, tried recording my pushes, see what can I do better. Because before, I was not getting Platinum. I didn't get Platinum while pushing for like, I don't know, a couple months, at least. I think it was at least two months where I just didn't, I just didn't get platinum. Every week it was just uh, fail, fail, fail. And it was, it was rough. It was rough because if I was, wasn't, wasn't killing things, or maybe I would get uh, just outsped. Uh, yeah, it was, it was really rough. So yeah, it's just trial and error and competitive nature of the past. And being a chill game compared to League of Legends, I decided to pick a raid over League of Legends. I just need that chill time, basically. Yeah, but yes, I don't play League anymore. I still play it a bit, uh, sometimes with friends, for fun, basically. Yeah, imagine that raid is chill compared to another game, because lots of people would complain that raid takes way too much time and effort. You probably haven't been following this stuff because uh, because you don't play anymore. But uh, I guess you know who Noob Raids is, or do you even know who he is? Yes, uh, I do. I do. So he yeah, used he, to create World of Warcraft. Content. 
Oh, oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. He does, <laughs> yeah, he does, he does hide the videos. I guess that's how he started in Raid, but he also used to make World of Warcraft videos. But basically, Raid made their own version of Oscar Gala. It's not out yet, but it's like the Content Creator Awards. And he was like visiting, I think, in Poland in their studio. Oh, that's and, dope. and I think he just made a video a couple of days ago about it. And he was talking about the fact that the Barium staff actually plays the game a lot. And he was kind of surprised how, how much they actually play the game and like in their offices. And they have their own accounts and there's some Barium employees that are like super whales, which is probably something as like us who are like, super into the game, always complaining about things. It might be surprising to hear. Or what, what do you think about that? Um, I'm shocked. Are yeah. they level 100? Is, is that the bottom, bottom line? Well, I'm just taking at his words, but he was saying that some of them were super hardcore into the game and they're spending their own money. Almost made me feel a little bit like uh, guilty that I'm always saying that they don't even play their own game and the only le reason, like, you remember when they buffed Warlord? And yeah. I used to, when Warlord was literally the best champion in the game at that time, there was no other lockout. Warlord was like so broken. Every, every defense team had Warlord. Like, just like right now or a while ago, if you look at top 30, every single defense team in top 30 is going to have Warlord. You're not going to be able to finish top 30 without Warlord. That's how it used to be at that time. And then they buffed Warlord. And I was saying in the Discord all the time that I guess somebody from the Plarium employees pulled Warlord or something, and they thought that it was about time to buff it. And we were always saying that they don't even play their game and so on. Yeah, it was it was very common for us to say that. Uh, and that's yeah, how I'm, I feel I'm honestly often, but lately it does feel like they are trying to make things better. Actually, I have to look at the time. Okay, yeah, they were actually giving us some um, um, sneak peeks just today that I guess I can talk about right now, but uh, they are doing some UI stuff and trying to make the leveling of champions way better. I'm sure you have In Tavern or in Campaign? Yeah, in, in Tavern. They're basically, I mean, I guess they're not, they can't get too mad about it, but basically how I, I would ca characterize it, I guess you haven't played Watch of Realms. I have not. But they basically have the exact same UI as in Watch of Realms pretty much, so that's I, oh, you can't see my screen, but when you go to Tavern, you can basically like uh, just choose level up 10 champions to 3 star, and you yeah. basically do things one click. I don't know why it wasn't like this from the start. I mean, it should be pretty obvious. I mean, they, they were, I guess the community even said for, for many years, uh, like even, even in those chump training challenges or whatever it was, uh tournaments chum training tournaments where everyone was trying to win the top reward abe was you know a legendary champion or a jingle hunter whatever the case was it was like super hard grind and it was super painful but yeah. yes Ch uh, champion training tournaments are the worst like always during the fuse and that's the like that's the one thing that uh, i hate the most i can't deal with that were you saying but something? I'm glad. I'm glad they are finally adding it. I feel like, I mean, yeah. I thought they said they're going to add it like last year or something. I don't know. Yeah. But about time. Something that actually, now that you say, um, Noobs was talking about on his video where he was actually visiting, visiting them and talking with them. They were talking about the fact that things often come with delay. And sometimes there's something that players complain about. And they have already fixed it like six months ago, but it's going to be released in like six months or after that. Like the timeline for something new to get into the game is long. And often they have already fixed it and they just can't speak about it. So, but I, I guess players and I, I definitely feel a little bit guilty afterwards hearing that perspective. But us as players, we of course always like get mad at Parium and it does feel like they don't care about the. Uh, UI, for instance, and the time of uh, amount of time that it takes to play the game, and those like um, little quality of life of quality life. How do you even say that? Quality of life. Quality of life type of things, but they literally have an update coming, I guess, in next couple of days in regards to that. 
and it's something that they are planning to focus on. Yeah. But we, we can never know. That's the thing. I yeah. Mean, they know. Well, I guess, yeah. I mean, we can only take them at their words, and I'm sure they're showing all of the best possible uh, perspectives to noobs. So, of course, I mean, we can take it a little bit as, as a propaganda, but I mean, fair enough, I understand that maybe maybe they actually do play the game. It does kind of make sense because it's something that they have been working on for years. But yeah, it, it is what it is. Anyway, so speaking about all kinds of UI issues and different types of things that we hate about the game, how did you end up deciding to quit the game? Then, when you were so into it, you're super competitive, you come from League of Legends background, and just like me, you used to, like, you were ultra tryhard, you were taking pictures or videos of your cl classic arena um, defense logs, and you were theory crafting with them, you were asking other people to fact check your defense logs and give you suggestions and so on. I know that you were super tryhard about things. How did you end up quitting and losing the motivation and the interest to play the game? Well, I finished the game technically 17 times. That was yeah. my main point. It was like nail in the coffin. Um, I finished my goal of reaching the most trophies in the game. Um, and after that, it's... I mean, it was repetitive already. Uh, I hated doing dailies. Um, it was super boring for me. Uh, doing resets uh, was still super fun, but it was starting to become boring, actually, Fiora crafting, because it was the same meta. So there was not much change, and I already spent, like, I don't know, hundreds, thousands of hours of um, learning the specifics of each, you know, champion, how it works, um, and how to counter it. So I already knew that there was no point in me sitting there every week, uh, I don't know, 10 hours a day trying to figure out something since I already knew before. And because of that, I just spent less and less time into raid to where I just, I just didn't feel like it and decided to instead get good at a different game. Sure. And at this point, it's probably safe to say that uh, there's no way that you're ever coming back or is there a chance that... Maybe we get a new game mode, maybe new clan versus clan that is actual PvP. Would you join the game back if they do something like that? I don't see a point. I don't, I don't see a point. The I told as a, as a joke to Reform, uh, one of uh, my clanmates or old clanmates, uh, I'll come back uh, once he gets uh, 17 trophies. He's on like six, I think. But yeah, uh, by the way, speaking of those trophies, like at that time when you were like basically on a roll, you were winning it pretty much every week or every other week. How is it possible? I mean, first of all, I remember when you got your first trophy, it was on Letander's account. I mean, so you've been through a couple different, uh, I don't know how you want to call only it. Only two, only two. Relax, okay, only okay, two. Two. So, okay, so two different, for those people that don't understand what we're talking about, so Rats had his own account, but obviously he isn't rich enough to be competitive if he wants to like win on his own account. So he ended up playing on other people's accounts that spent way more money in the game. And you had one account first, which was Letander's account. And he was kind of like a baby whale. I mean, he was a mega whale, don't get me wrong, but it was a newer account. And he started it from the scratch. There was much better accounts in the game. But you were able to get rank one trophy with that account as well. Yeah, it was it was hard because that account was only I don't know it wasn't even a year old. It was like six months old. Yeah, I... and he didn't have you know Romanti because Romanti was gate kept by Doom Tower, uh, secret missions or whatever it was, and he didn't have any like glyphs. It was it was super dry. It was it was bad. <laughs> it was bad. Yeah, but like. The, that account definitely wasn't like um, you didn't get rank 1 because the account was the best account in the game it probably wasn't even in the top 500 best accounts what do you think? Mm, I think top 500 is a very big stretch um, there's a lot of like hidden hidden whale crouching tigers whatever you want to say there's hidden hidden dragon whale accounts in the game I've noticed 
But okay, but nowhere close to top 100, let's say. Right? Uh, the other people, sure. in, the other sure. people in top 20 had like way, way better accounts. It wasn't even close. Sure. And there's a lot of people that don't play uh, than yes. True, true. But so you, first you were playing with Letander. And how many trophies did you get on Letander's account? It was after after first trophy. It was kind of Lefander's account was kind of a stepping stone for me to you know driving. It was like the first obviously first I don't know first car, first pony, whatever you want to call it. Once I got trophy, I instantly DM'd Bobby. I'm like Bobby, let let me check out your account. Let, let me see what's going on here. Nice. <laughs> and it was cracked. I knew I knew that was the account that I can just farm trophies. And I just told him straight up that um, I'm just going to farm trophies on your account. Yeah, and that's actually why I was asking about the letter Letterndesk account. That was the point that I was getting into as well. How were you able to farm trophies like every week or every other week? Even the Bobby's account, it was a good account. Probably not the best account still. I mean, there was plenty of accounts that were equal or better. How were you able to do it? I mean, weren't other people using pretty much the same teams as you? What, what, like, clearly there was some user difference. Most people were using slower offenses. Um, I was usually using bombs, uh, which made it, made it a lot more consistent in getting trophies. Since, I mean, it's either you win or you lose. Uh, but bombs give you that edge where getting points is a lot quicker. It does... It does give you a little bit of risk um, in terms of, you know, you can get polymorphed or um, they use, I don't know, immunity or whatever, but that's what you always need to check before you go there with bombs. You yeah, make sure uh, to check with a normal team. Uh, can you, I mean, there's different variations to bomb teams, of course, but can you quickly explain the basic Astralit like offense strategy? Okay, so you need to make sure you have attack up since attack up scales of. Uh, bomb damage you will have your like i don't know arbiter you have that mythic that gives attack up and turn meter um seeker whatever attack up and turn meter is what you want uh, then you will want a astrolith which places the bombs and at that point she should have the highest attack possible that she can get while placing the bomb because that's what it matters so make sure no decrease attack on 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 her as a debuff and make sure she has attack up as a buff and then you just spread it with a vizier or to hanorak they won't need accuracy due to astralith bombs not needing accuracy because spreading is dependent on the debuffs which is placed that's pretty much it you spread bombs and they die. Yeah, and basically, especially nowadays, stone skin is way more popular than it used to be. It's always been popular, but now Narsus kind of counters shield buffs and people are a little bit afraid to put bolster sets in their team and so on. But basically, bombs are kind of hit and miss strategy that it's very easy to lose with them in offense. But if you're able to pick the right battles, you can also basically get the fast as possible wins because some other top offense teams might be like one minute maybe 40 second battles but with bombs you might get like 10 second 20 second battles right yeah it's extremely fast and i got called out for using cheats many times and then i mean i'm recording on all my pushes uh i'm streaming them on twitch yeah so it's very obvious to see if i'm cheating or not uh and they were just surprised that they were losing on defense in 10 seconds. Yeah, it was, and it was so crazy for them. Yeah, and obviously we know, like, like being in the same clan and interacting with you, that, I mean, I know that you put a lot of, like, time and effort into this, and we're, like, looking through different people, uh, people's defense teams. You know what defense teams different people run. You have them prepared. There's Discord channels for uh, different accounts and how to counter them. And you often made like guides for other people in MAD how to beat specific accounts, right? Yep. So you were basically super into it and it was like user difference. Yeah, exactly. You need to be able to identify um, who to bomb. 
I mean, building building the I mean, building teams is not that hard. You, I mean, it's copy paste in the, in the raid. It doesn't require much skill if you just want to do a pretty decent. And with HH optimizer, that just makes it so much more easier. It's just fine tuning, which is a lot more difficult. But the main difficulty is actually finding those teams instantly, very quickly, refreshing, finding them again. You know, rinse and repeat. Yeah, the Hell Hades optimizer kind of changed the meta, right? It, yeah, like, it was, you, it was you, crazy. You you can't manage large accounts like that without it. I mean, you can, but it's not going to be uh, perfect. You're, there's going to be lots of mistakes. And the time used is totally different than with the optimizer. 100%, because before it was like you get to 98% uh, crit rate nuka, 99, hmm. and you get so mad. I'm like, one more percent, where? And, and and sometimes there's just like you look at the best possible pieces on the account if we're talking about Nuker, let's say, and you're trying to make a build with them, and you're not a super computer, you're not able to tell it in your head that okay, maybe it's actually better this one sub sub optimal piece because then you can get like you can use all of the other good pieces, and there's some other build that optimizer is suggesting that you're not even thinking about on your head and. That's still kind of doable on small account, like you or mine personal accounts. But when you play with those big boy accounts, you really can do it without optimizer. Yeah, I mean, they, I guess it depends on account because um, obviously some have um, like, I don't know, 5k, 5k uh, of gear. It's, and usually they just put on uh, Voltic Champion just, just to keep the gear. Yeah. Um, but yes, if you have a lot less gear and you play that count, you know, since the beginning and you're skilled, um, you will pretty much either, you know, hit the optimal build or not far from it. Uh, but optimizer just makes life 10 times easier, even for skilled players, but it's even better for, you know, newer or, you know, medium, medium game. Medium game? Is that a word? I don't know. Yeah, whatever. I mean, you're the game. you're the English speaker, so you tell me. I remember. Mid game, mid game. I remember when the optimizer was uh, released. You you were using it basically instantly, and I was kind of stubborn. I was like, I can do this myself. I don't need optimizer. And then it took a little bit when you were like telling me to use it. I was like, fuck! I was like, I was being an idiot. Like, this is way better than doing it uh, like manually, right? Yeah, it, 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 it's insane. I, I think I think Hell Hades seven like gave you like a free version of the optimizer or something like that. Even though you don't really need the paid paid version. Uh true. It's just a nice nice add on. Yeah. Yeah. To be honest, like with full disclosure, I have been using Hell Hades, Hell Hades optimizer a ton. It's definitely helped me out a lot and saved me tons of time. I have never uh, gotten the paid version because you don't need it. I mean, there's some extra perks, but you don't need it. But I might as well get it at this point just to show support, I guess. Yeah, it's it's amazing. But he gave you the free optimizer, right? Yeah. Is that something that I can't uh, show on video? Uh, yeah, my... Uh, sticky, sticky subject, uh, account sharing. <laughs> Uh, I mean, all, I mean, it says it there, doesn't it? I mean, all it gives is um, nuke damage numbers, unless they, you know, changed it. Mm. And regarding team, it's a, it's a big, uh, it's a big uh, positive in team selection. So when you try to copy someone else's full team for content, you're able to see all their, all their stats instead of just seeing the speed. Mm. So you would see all the sets, you would see all the masteries, you would see um specific you know attack defense hp whatever whatever resistance accuracy compared to the basic one which was just you know you see champions and speed that's it yeah and i for instance i i don't remember when i started doing it but for a super long time i always have my hell hades optimizer link in my video description so everybody can get access to all of my bills I totally get that maybe if you're competing for rank one, you probably don't want to do it. But it's not that big deal for me, and I've been doing it even when I was kind of trying to compete. So 
you can do that as well. It's very good also for like, even if you're not like publicly trying to show your bills, but linking to clan mates and so on. Yeah, it's like if you you know if you do it in a clan, it's it's super helpful. If someone asks, "Oh, what do you use for defense?" and you just link them your HH link, and they can just see, you know, what masteries, what stats you have, what you know, sets or whatever you have on those champions, it's it makes life ten times easier instead of just making screenshot of ten different things per champion. Sure. Okay, that's kind of an um, unintended advertisement to Hell Hades, but he doesn't need it, but he does deserve it. So thanks a lot for that. I'm kind of, um, I mean, Barium could have done it themselves. It could be something that is in the game UI, but it kind of makes sense that it wouldn't be something that they add. But I do kind of know that, have you ever played Battle of Exile? I have not. Okay, so, but you, you're kind of mildly aware of what it is. It's, yes, it's top down, kind of like Diablo. Yeah, it's in it's, a way. it's like a Diablo clone, except it's better than Diablo. But uh, it has like a trading system that uh, it's like basically full like uh, it's not in game, but it's like a website where you let's say it's something like Hell Hades Optimizer, but it's they kind of have a similar system. I'm pretty sure it's by the actual game company, but I might be wrong. But they basically have an external website where. You, you can put trade offers and you can search for different items with different prices and so on. I think that kind of um, game developers should consider those kind of like uh, website utilities as well. But I'm super happy that Hell Hades did it. I don't know where they got the idea to do it, that um, it would be worth the effort and it would become popular. But I'm pretty sure he's making some money off it at this point. Surely? Of course, of course. But that's that's good. He invested a lot of risk, time, effort. He definitely deserves it. All, all the best for him. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, I think I think we're pretty much out of my talking points. I, I guess we were getting into the fact that you quit the game and you're not not coming back at this point. Is there any other games like? Would you ever try another gacha game? Oh, uh, well, I mean, wait, I don't mind, since like, I would just drive on someone else's account. <laughs> like, you started playing Raid because you had a sponsor for it, and you haven't been streaming for a while. I think you should stream. I have said that many times. I think you were definitely my favorite Raid streamer. But uh, let's say that you started streaming again. There's a high possibility that some new gotchas would give you sponsorships. And do you think you could get... Uh, Caught with the same trap again. Um, I feel like yes. Uh, but if I enjoy the game, I don't mind playing it if I have fun with it. But I'm not gonna make the same mistake of um, spending my money on my own account. There's no point. I'll just I'll just play on someone else's account. It just makes life ten times easier. Yeah, I I have actually kind of went a little bit to the other side. Not not like by a lot, but uh, I used to be kind of when we met. I basically didn't spend any money in the game for multiple years. At this point, I'm like, um, I like I played some other games that I had some sponsored videos for and so on. So it makes it a little bit different, but I have been a little bit more comfortable spending a little bit money, but I'm not like going for whale territory. But let's say I start out a new game, like when we had AFK Journey, I got like a starter back on it. It was maybe like 22 USD or whatever. I wouldn't have done it back then when I started Raid. Nowadays, I'm a little bit more comfortable with that stuff. So I guess we went into opposite directions. You wouldn't Me. do it, right? No, no. Yeah, there's yeah. no point. There's no point. Yeah, maybe, maybe I learn. I learn from my own mistake. Yeah, maybe it muddies the water a little bit because uh, I'm also making content out of it, and I kind of see it from different perspective. But yeah, I, I have kind of gone. A little bit around it because I used to be very much against spending anything, but nowadays I'm not. I don't care. I don't care about it anymore. I wanted to get a good start in AFK Journey, and I spent like forty bucks or whatever. Oh, good. Yeah, you're not harming anyone by spending uh, that money, so it's fine. Yeah, whatever. I think I think it's kind of divisive thing in the raid community and the gacha community, especially if you look at Reddit and. 
spoiler alert, you shouldn't take Reddit too seriously. But there's like those people that basically give you uh, death threats if you spend any money in the game. And then there's so some people that say that you don't de deserve to have any opinion about anything if you don't spend like $5,000 to raid uh, shards per month. Like, oh, have you God. seen that? I haven't. I haven't been on Reddit to to know about these things. But you you haven't seen this kind of uh, train of. I mean, you used to use official Discord back in the day. That's also one thing that we both had in common. You didn't see this kind of sentiment there. I have no idea. I don't remember. No. Uh, I do remember. I mean, that I mean they, they do have in it that there. Discord. It was mostly new players, no? Yeah, exactly. And it's. Sometimes they have like very long posts, and it, it's basically Reddit posts. Like there comes somebody that has not spoken in the Reddit Discord before, and they kind of come say their piece and have a little bit like final final say on their way out or whatever. Not, not always when they're quitting, but they are starting out or whatever, and they come they can basically speak hard on either side of the issue. But yeah, I, I guess you don't care. You're you're overrated. You're playing other games at this point. Yeah, exactly. Is is exactly. there any any other games apart from like the Gacha Genre, which you're really not like you're not really keeping your eye out on those games? But is there anything else like MMOs, maybe new Diablo games, something that has the RPG elements and the competitive aspect that you like in Raid? Is there something that you're looking out for? Like raid specifically, no. No, not not no like raid, way. but uh, could be completely different or something with maybe some similar aspects, like the RPG mechanics, I guess. The only game what I'm looking forward is the Riot MMO. Is is the only one? Uh, okay, I've been okay. I guess we can get into that topic. I have been waiting for that game for many long, many long time, many years. And I was also waiting for Ashes of Creation since like 2015, when my clan in Back Desert Online quit. Shout out to Grind. But uh, yeah, I don't have high hopes for those. I don't know if they're going to happen, how different are they going to be as they promised. But wasn't the Riot MMO basically scrapped at this point? Yeah, I don't, I don't it think it's, it's even in ah. development anymore. I mean, they said they scrapped the last idea and they're building it again, type of thing. Okay, well, yeah. And Riot MMO was announced when? Do you remember? No idea. It was, it was a couple of years ago already. Yeah, and like I said, Riot MMO and Ashes of Creation were two of those MMOs that I was kind of looking forward to. And Ashes of Creation was definitely announced first, but it was announced, I think... Uh, I don't want to say it wrong, either in December of 2015 or 2014, but it was during the time when I was playing Back Desert Online. Uh, I remember very well because one of my clan mates in, uh, in Grind, called Death's Proxy, he made the original Discord server for Assets of Creation, and then we had like the creator of the game in there, and there was like 20 people or whatever. So I was super into that stuff, but now it's been like 10 years, I'm getting old, I'm soon gonna be in retirement the game isn't out and they oh, good. they broke like 15 promises that he made in the discord originally which i understand like things change and so on like i remember he specifically said we talked about it with him directly he said that there's not not gonna be any kind of um what are they called in english like uh resale uh, what's that called like where do you where you say order yeah yeah, yeah. there's not going to be any early access pre-order things. They're not going to sell any in-game stuff before the game is going to be released, and they're not going to sell early access to the game, which was a big thing that he was talking about, because Black Desert Online, for instance, I think, had three-day early access, and when it launched, it was like super competitive game, where you can attack other people on site, and obviously getting three days early access is going to change the game a little bit, and those people that got to high level are not gonna let anybody else level up or anything so yeah i think that's topic for another video i'm super into mmo games if other people don't know about it i haven't actually i have talked about it a little bit on the videos but uh i have played multiple other mmos during the times of raid i always play a new one when it launches or many of them but i keep getting disappointed with them and 
basically it's the same type of mechanics that they have in those that we have in Raid that I'm into. Like those RPG elements where you come up with builds and strategies and kind of try to be efficient and better than other people. I guess that's what you're into in Raid as well, no? Com competing. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty much only Arena, yeah. Okay, sure. Pretty much only Arena. Okay, I guess this was like one hour video already. I don't know, do you have anything else to say, like any final words? Anything that you wanted to talk about? What's your next clan? Okay, I, I, I guess I'll have to think about it. You, you're memeing, but you, you're like... Rats is literally tuning out of the raid. He's not following anything. He just heard about this stuff right now. He doesn't, he doesn't actually care or know about it. But I don't know what my clan is going to be. I'm thinking about options. I've been kind of wanting to make my own clan for a while, but I didn't want to like leave mad and kind of be seen as uh, like a traitor. But I guess at this point, even if I don't want to be, I'm traitor. And if I join join other clan, I'm going to be traitor. If I make my own clan, I'm going to be it. So we will see about that. I might join Panda's clan. He made very tempting offer. That would be kind of uh, the villain arc, joining the dark side and uh, siding with Panda to own Matt. Who, will s <laughs> Who knows? Oh, we will God. see. There's multiple options. I don't want to... Uh, I'm right now, I'm not in any clan at all in the game. I want to take multiple days off and not even worry about it. I guess I'm gonna miss on a couple days of cruel and some shards that you get from clan boss. It's not that big deal. I have been playing the game for a long time. I can take a little bit time off and collect my thoughts about it. But at this point, I kind of feel a little bit sad um, not being in clan that I was in for three years. So I don't feel like joining any clan at this point. What do you think yeah. about that, Rats? Leaving us on a cliffhanger instead of just telling us uh, the clan you're joining next. By horrible, way, horrible. By the way, I don't know if you want to speak about it, but you do have some of your own personal experiences uh, leaving mad or getting kicked or I don't know how you want to phrase it. Do you want to talk about it? Uh, I don't think there's a point. It's, it's, it's too late. Okay, f fair enough. And that's maybe some like hyper, uh, hyper specific drama shit that only the top 20 arena players might care about anyway. So I don't think anybody apart from the people in the big lands that are also into drama would, would even care, to be honest. But you, you left mad briefly and then you came back, which is, I don't know if anybody else really did that. Like you didn't quit, but you also joined other class. Uh, I feel like someone else did. Uh, scrap. There you go. There's a name out there. Well, I, I can't see it. Was this Scrap? Uh, Slick Rick. Slick Rick? Oh, Slick. What clan did he go in? Slick Rick went to drive Scrap in NLB and then he came back with Scrap. <laughs> dude, mad. Dude, dude, the video kind of. Uh, your camera kind of died off. Maybe a little bit in our unfortunate position, but maybe that's. Uh, that's a good point to, I guess, close the video on. Oh, good. Oh, good. It's, it's not that bad, but it's kind of funny. Oh, good. I appreciate you having me. Yeah, I appreciate you being on the video. I mean, we talk about one hour about the game that you don't play anymore, and <laughs> you probably don't really even want to hear about Raid. So uh, thank you for taking your time. And I know that you don't want to, like... I've been telling you to make YouTube videos for a long time, and you're not really doing it actively. But Rats does have a Twitch channel and YouTube channel. We're going to link them both at the end of videos, of course. So make sure to join them or subscribe them, whatever. Maybe Rats will stream in the future. That's Copium. a question. Are you going to do it? Yeah, you're, on, you're on Copium. Maybe, we, may, we'll maybe you will stream the Riot MMO when it launches in 10 years. I'm not promising anything. Okay, well, I'm, I'm, I've been promising for a while that I'm going to stream. I'm never doing it, even though I keep saying that it's going to happen tomorrow, but I will do it. We'll see. <laughs> YouTube stream, why? Uh, I actually want to stream on Twitch. I was kind of thinking between both, but I think we're going to go for... 
I might do both, but I'm going to start out streaming on Twitch just because I want to diversify it a little bit and do the the other route that I never even tried. Like, I have never done a single stream before, so... And people often think that I make streams because you probably, I guess you haven't seen my live arena videos, but you know the format. I play yes. live arena for two hours and it kind of looks like they are stream clips and a lot of people assume that I'm a streamer, so... Mm. Oh god, doing it just for YouTube. The live arena two hour uh TED talks yeah ba basically by the way okay be honest have you ever seen any of any of my live arena videos i have yeah i have I like have. like fully how how long have you seen okay re relax or fully Bruh. okay fully, well, fully you, you saw like 10 minutes of at least one of them half an hour half an hour okay and what was i talking about you act like I have good memory. I have no idea. Okay. I have w no idea. Did, did you think it was like remotely interesting? What do you think about the format? Yeah, I think it's it's fine. It's it's directed to a specific audience. It's it's nice. It's you know there in the background while while doing something. It's uh, yeah. You're right about that. There's one guy who keeps commenting me if I have multiple days off that he needs my. Uh, live arena videos so that he can watch them to go to sleep so <laughs> I, I think he means that seriously oh because he has made the same comment multiple times when i haven't done live arena videos so maybe he's serious <laughs> I, I think he might be serious to be honest but kind of memeing at the same time that's funny anyway that's it thanks for watching do you have anything else to say are we done have a nice day okay have a nice day see ya